91 miles an hour from Ochka. Line break now warming in the bullpen for the Padres. Yeah, those three guys, Ochka, Line Brink, and Hoffman, they've done quite a job for this Padre baseball team. You saw Chipper Jones there wearing the hard hat. Ripped down the right field line. That's going to bounce and roll up against that short, jutting out fence. And it'll be two bases for Estrada. He is two for four. Let's go back to the studio and Stephen Roth, guys. Hey, Dave, have you heard the one about the Dodgers winning 151 straight games when leading That's after eight? That's it again. Not anymore. It ended at 151. All-time pinch hitter. Lenny Harris comes through. Bases loaded. Paul Aduka walked to load the bases. Comes around and scores. 6-4 Marlins. Are you kidding me? I'm shocked. Man. The Dodgers finally blew one there. Pitch is up high for a ball on DeRosa. And now Johnny Estrada is out. They have a runner in for him. It's Nick Green at second base. And Chipper Jones has come to the on deck area to bat for the first time tonight. He was scratched from the lineup hours ago because of a migraine headache. And now Atlanta has a runner at second base. Nobody out in the inning. And they're going to get the red hot chipper in there. Bobby Cox can't wait to use him in this spot. Swung out and missed by DeRosa. Two balls, one strike. I, I would feel the same. <laughs> I mean, I would have loved to have Chipper Jones in there. Get four or five at bats. He's going to send him up there as a pinch hitter and maybe the potential go ahead. And so chipper Jones has homered in five straight games. Even more impressive than that, each of his last six hits have been home runs. So, I mean, he's he's Barry Bonds locked in right now. It doesn't look like he's pressing like he was earlier in the year. Off the middle, and that's a base hit. Green will be held to third. It's bobbled out there by Guzman, but no advance beyond third by Green. The youngster bobbled the ball. But Freddie Gonzalez had already put the brakes on the runner, Green at third. And now they're on the corners with nobody out. Nice hitting by DeRosa. Little sinker down in a way. Didn't, didn't try to pull it. Goes right with it up the middle. So trouble here for the San Diego bullpen, which has been oh so reliable. But Otska is getting a visit from Bochi here. The batter will be the switch hitter, Chipper Jones. That's all for Otska. And we'll be back in a moment. Time and the dealing is. Chipper Jones bothered by a migraine headache and could not start tonight, although he was in Bobby Cox's original starting lineup. But he's playing now in the eighth inning against Scott Linebreak. He will hit. Linebreak appearing in his 58th game. Look at that minuscule ERA. And it's even lower than that since the 1st of July. Since that time, it's a 1 6 9. Now he's in a situation where the game's on the line. So Linebreak's got to make some. Scott Linebreak's got to make some good pitches. You're facing a guy. Who's swinging a hot bat? See five straight games with a homer, and one of those games he hit two. Chipper Jones with runners at first and third, and nobody out. He takes outside ball one. Not only are those numbers impressive, what Tony talked about, five games in a row, but against the San Diego Padres, he has homered in six consecutive games, going back to the previous series earlier this spring. Here's the 1-0 pitch from the right-hander. Swing and a miss. It's one and one. These are normally those at bats where he really kind of settles in and you know, is looking to get himself in a good position and, and, and do some damage here. And sometimes it's kind of hard to do that coming off the bench, but this guy's delivered in so many clutch situations for the Braves. The 1-1. Line shot center field coming on Guzman. Now up to make the catch. Here comes Green tagging up. He is in to score. So even when Chipper does not hit a home run, he still drives in a run. A sack fly. More accurately, a sack liner, and Guzman almost misplayed it. That was exactly right. I mean, this was not a fly ball. This was a line drive. Guzman 
broke in on this ball. But he does, Chipper does the job. He gets one and runs in and brings him right back in it. So despite the bad headache, the migraine, he comes off the bench, picks up an RBI, and it's a one-run game in the eighth. The San Diego lead cut to 5-4. Here's for call. A runner at first base and one away. Fastball missed the corner. In the contest for call, started the game with a wicked line drive, but Burrows at third base rose up to snatch it out of the air. For call decided to bunt for a single in the third inning, which he did. Since then, he has struck out and walked, so he is one for three tonight. Up there on the left side of the plate. Back to back switch hitters here for Atlanta, and the crowd wanted that as a strike. Instead, Jim Wolf said it missed. Bochy barking as well. Linebacker going for the outside corner, but that was clearly off the plate. Hernandez tried to bring it back. But Wolf said no, the 2-0 is high. I think what's happened here in the ballpark is that the fans realize this is an opportunity to pick up some ground against the Dodgers who got beat tonight. And uh, the significance of this game, I mean, now it's really become important that they uh, try to close this game out. That's ball four. So Percal is on base for the third time tonight. And it's first and second, which means Atlanta has the tying run in scoring position. I'm still in shock that Gagne blew a save again. I can't believe it either. I didn't think he'd do that twice in one season. That brings, up, that brings up the question, Tony. Yep. And you and I kind of talked about it early tonight. How many pitches will Gagne throw by the end of September? And is he starting to get worn out? As Giles steps in, grounds it right back to the mound, backhanded. Throwing the second low throw, dug out. He's upended, but Loretta hung in there on the play and got the out. Boy, Loretta showing you his full range of skills tonight. Power, two hits, and he dug this one out of the dirt, Tony. I mean, again, a comebacker. Line break doesn't wasn't really in the greatest position, but the throw is a terrible throw. Loretta not only digs that ball out of the dirt, but has a presence of mind to touch second base, too. See line break throw that ball straight in the ground. And watch, he picks that ball and steps right on the bag as Percal takes him out. DeRosa over to third, though. The runner at first is Giles, and here's the dangerous J.D. Drew. 0 for 4 tonight. Way front of that swing on the off-speed pitch and it's 0-1. That was a good changeup by Scott Lineberg. Figuring J.D. Drew looking for something to get ahead. Looking for him to use the fastball to get ahead. He pulled the string on him and J.D. was way out in front. Line break from the belt. Kicks and fires. Foul back and a wicked rip by J.D. Drew. Maybe the best swing he's had tonight. He's behind 0-2. Oh, got that ball up in the zone. You're right, J.D. stood right there and took a whack. Fouled it straight back. Well, this large crowd on a Wednesday night trying to will line break through J.D. Drew. Padres trying to keep the lead. And that's in there for strike three. He got him looking. Drew strikes out for the third time in the game. The Padres still lead by one. A line break of J.D. Drew, and they got it in that inning. Here's Chris Reitzma out of the bullpen for Atlanta. He works a lot. Pitching to Sean Burroughs here, and that's in there for strike. I want to welcome those of you who have been watching the Dodgers and the Marlins and saw a raucous comeback by the Florida Marlins. I mean, that just doesn't happen to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Chipper Jones stays in the ball game at third base. He's picked up an RBI tonight, but he was out initially because of a migraine headache. Swing and a miss by Burroughs, and he is dispatched quickly to the dugout. He strikes out, one away. Let's go back to how the top of the eighth inning ended on the strikeout of Drew. Line break, I think there's no question J.D. Drew was sitting on a breaking ball right there. 
Scott Linebury threw a fastball that was really kind of up in the zone, and J.D. Drew took it for strike three. That was with runners at first and third, the tying run 90 feet away. Drew's had a tough night. Here's Khalil Green, the rookie shortstop. He is flying to center, flying to left, and also driven in a run with a fly ball, a sacrifice in the sixth inning. And right now, that is the difference in the ball game. One run. Five for San Diego. Way out there in the bullpen, beyond left center field, the San Diego Padres. Trevor Hoffman is starting to warm up. Popped up into left center field. And there's Chipper Jones for the, I should say, Andrew Jones for the catch. And they're two down. Here's Trevor Hoffman getting ready. And then men do that for a lot. Reisman's done a good job here mixing just you know, power plus fastball in the mid 90s with a real good changeup. Pumping it in there 93, 94 miles per hour, per hour and then coming back with a changeup in the 70s. Ramon Hernandez is one for three with an RBI single this evening. He takes ball one. Due up now in the ninth inning for Bobby Cox's Braves. Julio Franco, Andrew Jones, and Eli Marrero, the scheduled hitters. And they will be facing Trevor Hoffman. That'll be right after Hell's Bells rocks the house at Petco Park. 31 saves for Hoffman. And a 2.53 ERA. 2.53. He did not swing the bat. Check swing by Hernandez. It's 2-1. Ball right there to Chipper Jones. Up and over. Side retire. That's it in the bottom of the eighth. We go on to the ninth. Hoffman coming on for San Diego to protect a one run lead. Well, the fans love Trevor time here in San Diego. The sound of Hell's Bells. That's his tune. Trevor Hoffman enters the ball game. It is the ninth inning at Petco Park here in San Diego. And the Padres have a 5 4 lead against Atlanta, trying to win their first season series for the Braves since 1990. Trevor Hoffman, you see his numbers. Coming back from surgery last year, I think if you have asked him about 31 saves at this point in the season, I think he would be thrilled. And, uh, in the pennant chase, uh, pitching pretty well and not overpowering like he's like the old Trevor Hoffman. This guy still knows how to get people out. Well, last year he pitched in only nine games and did not have a save all season long that shoulder surgery he's come back with a vengeance doesn't throw as hard as he used to but the results are pretty much the same and, and you know I, I played behind this guy a long time and he's, in my mind he's one of the best and you have to give him credit he was the first one to come up with a song to come in on too in this era yeah often and, copied since and yeah lots of guys have Franco running up the bunt, fouls it away, and that is strike one. Now, that's something you maybe didn't want to pay to see, Julio Franco dropping down a bunt, but um, certainly would have caught Burroughs by surprise at third. Yeah, and I can tell you the exact reason why he was trying to lay down that bunt is because Trevor Hoffman's changing. And it's a tough pitch, and Franco felt like he had a chance to maybe sneak a bunt down and get a base hit here. Well, there was a lot of debate about whether Trevor Hoffman could come back and come back yeah. to the kind of form he has after serious shoulder surgery. Piled away by Franco, who has gone two for four tonight with a double and a single. But Hoffman indeed has come all the way back. And has had an absolutely brilliant career in a San Diego uniform. Let me tell you this about Trevor Hoffman. Nobody's going to outwork him. He's still in phenomenal shape. And he puts the time and effort in. Just outside, as you saw Franco follow it all the way back 
into the mid of Hernandez. One ball and two strikes. You saw how hard it was for him to hold up on that changeup, and that's one of the reasons why you think about bunting on the first pitch. The high kick in the pitch. Roped into left field. Peyton has a long way to go to cover it. And Franco will be content with a lengthy single. He can absolutely flat hit, can't he? He has three for five. That's good hitting. Poppy, Poppy threw him a changeup. And look at him. He just waits back on it and just serves this ball right into left field for a base hit. Now Franco representing the tying run here. So Charles Thomas, one of the fastest men in the National League, will run for him at first. Thomas, the pinch runner. The leadoff man is on for Atlanta in the ninth inning. Here's Andrew Jones now. He takes a strike. Andrew, two for four in this one with a pair of singles and one out of six in his career off of Hoffman, but that one is a homer. This is not a situation where you don't expect them to drop a punt. Move that runner in the scoring position. Charles Thomas can run. The 2004 World Series of Poker coming up next year on ESPN2, right after the Padres and the Braves. Inside, almost hit him. Andrew Jones skipping out of the way. Two balls, one strike. Charles Thomas can run at first base. And Andrew Jones can handle the bat a little bit, so he has some power. The right-hander pitching. Swing a high fly ball, center field. Goes one back on the track at the wall. It's gone. It is gone. Atlanta has the lead in the night. How about that? Andrew Jones against Trevor Six to five. It's good hitting. Jones got a ball out over the plate. Drives it out of the ballpark. Look at the Braves bench. Fired up. A two run homer for Andrew Jones. The Braves lead six to five. They have treated Petco like a playpen in the series. Atlanta taking the lead six to five in the ninth inning on a two run blow by Andrew Jones to dead center field. Swing and a high. Popped the shallow center. Guzman coming in on it. And that is the first out here in the ninth. One man gone. Another look at the home run swing of Andrew. I think Hoffy wanted to get this ball outside and left it in the middle of the plate. And I guarantee you, on the Atlanta side, you know, they're feeling like this was a game that they could win anyway because the two runs the Padres got one earned. Well, now it's John Smoltz, the other great closer in the building. He starts to loosen up in the Atlanta bullpen. Boy, the Braves have just been tearing the cover off the ball and hitting one home run after another in this series in a ballpark that's not supposed to allow you to hit home runs. Adam LaRoche the batter as he hits in the seventh spot for Bobby Cox. Trevor Hoffman coming out of the bullpen needing three outs to lock up the win. But Andrew Jones takes him out of the yard to center field for a two run blow. Swing fly ball center field. Guzman darts over into the alley. He's got it for the second out. He thinks there are three outs. The youngster finally realizes there are only two. That was the second out. Having a 
great shot by Andrew Jones as a way of making the center fielder dizzy. Yeah, I think this, this whole crowd is in shock. Yeah. It spun everybody's cap here in San Diego. Swinging a line shot into the alley. That's going to settle down for a hit and extra bases for Perez. He'll chug into second base with a double. So Hoffman has certainly not been unhittable here in the ninth inning. A single by Franco, the homer by Andrew Jones, and now a double by Perez. The Braves fighting tonight and fighting back from a one-run deficit against one of the great closers of the game. And now the Braves have the lead. Those two guys are the reason. Two great at bats. Give the Braves the lead. And Chipper Jones, even though he didn't get into the ball game as far as getting a chance to hit until the eighth inning because of a migraine headache, he contributes. He has a sack fly and an RBI tonight. And it is, after all, a one run game. Ground ball pulled to the right side. Loretta with the stop, and the side is retired. Ahead six to five as we go to the bottom of the ninth and Smoltz is coming on. What do you have there? Can I see? For Atlanta, will that man be celebrated as the hero tonight? He just might be. He hit a two-run homer moments ago off of Trevor Hoffman. And now Atlanta has the lead and they turn it over to John Smoltz in the ninth. Smoltz with a 190 earned run average, looking for his 31st save. Terrence Long fights off the first pitch, fouls it away for strike one. He pinch hits. And then it's the top of the order, Guzman, followed by Mark Loretta. And if anybody reaches, Brian Giles. So don't go away because tonight the trend has been, as LaRoche takes over at first base, for the great closers in the National League to blow saves. Fastball downstairs. Trevor Hoffman just blew his fourth save of the season. John Smoltz with 140 career saves, but remember the Dodgers, Mr. Automatic, Eric Gagne, also blew a save tonight to the Marlins, who rallied to win against Los Angeles. Yeah, see, that's the thing that makes John Smoltz so good is that, you know, he can power, he can overpower you with the fastball. He's got a great slider. You saw a good split figured fastball right there, that last pitch of Terrence Long. I mean, he can go up, go about it a whole bunch of different ways. The one two into the dirt. Went back with that splitter. And he can throw that split finger pitch so hard. You're not supposed to throw it 90, 91, 92. No, you're you're, you're not. And and he's able to do it. And he's he just has that ability to just kind of you know make stuff up as he goes. To pitch, got him swinging. One man out in the bottom of the ninth for the Padres. Andrew Jones just moments ago did this against Trevor Hoffman with a man on. Dead center field and gone. A two-run homer. A one-run deficit became a one-run lead for the Braves. I think those guys don't like winning. I think they, those guys are used to winning. They're used to winning, and they like to win. Everybody pretty much counted them out of this game, and they kept believing, and they got it done. Great A.B. by Julio Franco, and then Andrew Jones got a ball that he could handle, and he hit it out of the ballpark. Now you turn it over to John Smoltz, and it's almost like it's not fair with the stuff he's got. Right through there at the knees for a strike on the youngster, Freddie Guzman, who made his major league debut last night. Got a base hit off Jared Wrights in his very first big league at bat. Tonight, he has a single, two strikeouts, and a ground down. Now, if he gets on, he is an absolute blur. The Padres have called him the fastest man they've had at the major league level in 17 years. I'll tell you what, Freddie Guzman has not seen anybody in the minor leagues like John Smoltz. Though. No, sir. Little trickler. Smoltz will have to hurry. Throws off balance. He knew he had to hurry, too. And he made a fine play to get him. Two up and two down in the bottom of the ninth. That was a nice play because you know, we talked about it before. Speed sometimes can force you into making mistakes. 
John Smoltz knew exactly what he wanted to do. He came off the mound. He made the made the play. He fielded the ball and made a good throw to first base and got the out. Now he has to face not only a red hot hitter in Mark Loretta, but a guy who has already homered tonight and doubled and is hitting 342 and has the most hits of anybody in the National League. He takes strike one. Again, this is one of those battles where you got a guy on the mound who's very confident in what he does, a guy at the plate who feels exactly the same way, and so you really kind of sit back and watch and see how they attack each other. Outside that time, 96 miles an hour, one ball and one strike. Atlanta rallying in the ninth against Trevor Hoffman, who blew the save. Andrew Jones with a clout to center field, a two-run homer. And the Braves just continue to find ways to win. Two balls, one strike. Smoke pretty much this A.B. has not messed around on the inner half of the plate. A couple of fastballs away. I think that last pitch might have been a slider or maybe a split he held, down, hold, held on to too long. Outside again. Now he's gone to three and one on Loretta. But you see, he's not messing around on the inner part of the plate. He's gonna, he's, he's gonna stay on the outer half. Atlanta, since losing a season high three in a row near the end of June, has gone 35 and 13. They have been lights out. Ground ball but foul. And now full count on Loretta. See that last pitch will show you what velocity will do because Perez asked for that ball on the outer third and that ball ran in on Loretta's hands. And 97 miles per hour got in there in a hurry and all Loretta could do was foul it off. Giles on deck. Here's the payoff pitch. Did he check? They appealed. No swing. And it's ball four. Smoltz a little bit chapped. Loretta will take his base. And the tying run is on for the Padres with two down in the ninth. You know, again, it was a good at bat. Smokes was not going to give in. He was going to make him hit his pitch. I think he really felt like he went, he went on that swing, but didn't get the call. William Mazzoni, he didn't like it either. And the reason why is this guy coming up to the plate. Ryan Josh. Swing and a miss. He took a vicious cut. Nothing and one on Giles. He's homered tonight. He and Loretta went back to back in the fifth inning. That's a real rarity for the San Diego Padres. It tied the game at the time. Giles has also tripled this evening. Checked his swing and it was down low. No argument that time by Smoltz. One and one. But you see John Smoltz out there pitching. He's not just throwing. He, there's a reason why he wanted that pet last pitch to, the, to Loretta. He didn't get it. He's not going to give in. He started him off with a split finger, came back with one. Line. Oh, he got through it. The rush did not make the play. It's down the line. Here comes Loretta. Through firing. Here comes the run. The throw to the plate. He is out at home. That's the ball game. Loretta cut down at the plate. The throw waiting for him. And Atlanta pulls out a dandy. Drew went deep into the corner to dig it out. Fire to the cutoff man. And the throw is right on the money. You know, this is a split finger. Giles lines it right, right down the line. Now here's the play that happened in the first inning. The ball ricochet. You see J.D. Drew stop that ball with his bare hand? That's what allows the play at the plate for Loretta to be out by so far. Because J.D. Drew went down there, that ball ricocheted, and he stopped it with his bare hand and gets that ball in. A perfect relay, relay throw. Here's Mark Loretta running, and he's going. Rob Picciolo, the third base coach, he makes a decision right there. Hey, go ahead and try to score. But a perfect relay to the plate. Mark Loretta's out by a good five feet. And he actually collided face-to-face -face with Perez. 
So not only tagged out, shaken up a little bit on the play, there's no way that Picciolo could have envisioned the hard rebound and the way that Drew dug it out with the bare hand. Yeah. That was a terrific play by Drew, because otherwise it scoots right on by him. What a way to end it. The final score, Atlanta 6 and the Padres 5. The World Series of Poker coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Tony Gwynn and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Dave O'Brien. A wonderful win for Atlanta and a deflating loss for the San Diego Padres. Six to five the final as we say goodnight from San Diego.